Hi, it's Clark. We're doing this series on how to provision, preserve, and prepare foods on a sailboat. Today we're going to talk about a probably very novel way of storing foods for a very, very long time. This will work for dried foods like rice and beans, and what we're going to do is we're going to preserve it in a carbon dioxide environment. For this video, we're going to use this home-built carbonating machine that I uh, did a video on a bit ago. Uh, we're going to use it to change the atmosphere around our dried goods, and we expect this to keep these dried goods in good shape for a very, very long time. We're going to be hopping on a boat, and we can buy food while we're going, but some things are hard to find, and we just plain like to have a, an inventory of food. This cruise may take us five years before we come back to the U.S. So it's going to be really great to have some long life foods that we can uh, rely on. I built this for 150 bucks and all the parts are uh, described and how to build it in this other video. Okay, why would someone want to preserve food in a carbon dioxide environment? Well, to preserve food, you need to uh, protect it from a couple things. Uh, oxygen's really hard on food, especially if it has any oil at all, like even brown rice has oil in it. If uh, it gets to oxygen in the air, it'll go bad. That's called going rancid. Uh, no free oxygen in carbon dioxide. Uh, if it's got, it gets wet, dried foods are dried so that, uh, you know, they're not wet. Uh, bacteria can really get a foothold and take off. So you want to keep them dry. And then finally, um, there's pests that can live on like no water, uh, weevils. Oh, you wanna see a weevil? Just a minute, let me talk about weevils. Weevils are little tiny little bugs and they get into your dried goods. Their eggs are already in when you buy them. But you get down to the tropics where it's hot and they just take off. Uh, they're like a little tiny black bug and their larva looks like rice. I once had to eat weevily rice for three months because it's all that was available and I just didn't want to leave the beautiful spot to go get new groceries, so we just had to deal with it. We just recently were cleaning some stuff out from the boat from an earlier cruise and we found some weevils and some garbanzo beans. I'll be right back. I found them. Um, luckily, we haven't cleaned this one yet. This is how we used to store garbanzo beans and Ah, uh, you know, not the greatest idea. Well, the weevils got to this package and there's uh, adults all around the uh, inside here. Um, they look dead, so I'm not gonna worry about them getting into our new food. If you look at things that have weevils, they chew and there's just a lot of powder. Um, it's probably what they're done with, <laughs> but you'll see that all over the food. You could probably still see some crawling around in here. They don't hurt anything. You can eat weevils. It probably just changes some of the carbohydrates into protein, but man, I don't like eating them. So um, we're going to avoid that. So it's water, uh, oxygen, and bugs we want to keep out. This, what got me thinking about all these things, I saw, I, probably it was a YouTube video, um, how they, uh, if you have something really precious that you can't spray poisons on, like antiques and art, uh, they use carbon dioxide for, I think it was 48 hours at 10% to kill bugs. And I researched this and checked it out, and it's a perfectly valid, valid way to kill bugs. They can't handle the carbon dioxide. We uh, preserve foods all different ways. We pressure can, and we do that for meats and things that are wet. Uh, we uh, refrigerate and freeze, but that's not forever. We only have so much space. Uh, canned food is really handy. It's wet. It's already in water, so it's larger and it's really heavy. This bag of dried beans is the same as the beans that are in all of these cans, all five cans. So we prefer it to bring dried beans. Problem is, packages you get dried beans in aren't so great. Uh, these aren't perfect plastic. There's always little holes so moisture can get in. Uh, there's already a load of air in here, and as we said, I would bet you money that there's already weevils, uh, eggs in there, right from the factory. So, how do we do this better? Well, we put them in uh, airproof containers. And what's that do for you? Well, it protects them from water. It's really good at that. But the air's already in there, so it doesn't help you from the, the oxygenation, the, the going rancid. And as we said, bugs are already in there. We um, vacuum pack things. This sucks all the air out, so as long as you can see it's all wrinkly, you know no water can get in. 
and there's very little oxygen left. It's very effective that way. But if it's anything that's pointy at all, and think pasta, um, it'll just poke holes in the bag. Rice will do the same thing. So it doesn't really work so well. Also, anything you'd like to keep in shape, uh, this is gonna crush it like a steamroller. So we have this option. Uh, this is dried broccoli, we dry it ourselves, and we put it in this jar. We hook it to our vacuum packer. We'll go into detail on the, on the vacuuming thing, but this sucks all the air out. And it's a really good deal because it, it does everything. Uh, but now we have to carry this big old jar, and when we're done with it, we have to keep carrying the big old jar. So those are all good options, but they have a downside. Uh, we've come up with another way. We want to do the carbon dioxide environment because uh, we're going to seal it up from water. We're going to keep all, almost all the oxygen out of there. And uh, if there's a bug in there, ew, it's going to have a really bad day uh, because it can't handle it. And how we're going to do this is use uh, soda bottles. The nice thing about soda bottles, we can find these anywhere in the world. And when we're done with them, uh, we can dispose of them however it's appropriate where we are. So that's what we're going to do. Now they have to be clean and they have to be very dry. And uh, cleaning is pretty obvious. Bottle brush, clean it out, rinse it out. Uh, drying can be problematic because it has a very small hole, but Emily came up with an ingenious way. She just puts them in the oven at 120 degrees and doesn't take terribly long at all and they just dry right out really well. So you end up with a nice dry uh, bottle to put your uh, stuff into. Keep in mind though, they have to be soda bottles, not water bottles. Uh, this device is going to put in quite a bit of pressure. These guys are absolutely safe up over 100 PSI, I believe. We're going to take this one up to 60 PSI. Uh, you do that to a water bottle, it's going to go pop, and it's going to at the very least be a mess. If it holds out for a while, it could actually be a little bit dangerous. But these are good. Uh, you can use any size bottle you want. We use, like for rice and such, we use great big ones and whatever's appropriate. Our biggest problem, quite honestly, is we don't drink soda pop. So <laughs> we're relying on friends and family to drink the soda pop to get our bottles. So let's put the... Uh, the beans in the bottle. Emily does this normally. It's the first time I've tried it. She tells me if I pour them all in fast, it'll jam up. So I'm just going to put them in. Okay. All right. I'm not a pro at this end. I do the chemistry. Okay, here we go. I get a free hand this way. <laughs> All right, they fit, like, exactly. I was getting nervous at the end. Um, probably get a cut more off the funnel if we're gonna do a lot of it, or uh, have Emily do it. She has no problem. When you see at the end, we're gonna show you all the things she's put in. Just lots and lots. Okay, now, right now, this is full of regular air around the beans. Not much, but, you know, there's a lot, there's still a, a bit. Regular air is 75% nitrogen. It's 24% uh, oxygen, so a quarter of what's in here is oxygen. And the rest of it is trace stuff that just doesn't matter. Uh, the nitrogen is inert. If we could fill it with nitrogen, we'd be happy. But I don't have a source for nitrogen. I have a source for carbon dioxide because we like bubbly water and we've got it. So what I'm gonna do, leave that air in there, and then I'm gonna put in more gas. And I got this thing set for 60 PSI, so we're gonna bring this up. Oh, by the way, uh, atmospheric pressure right now in the room, we're at sea level, is 14.7 PSI. So 60 PSI is like four atmospheres. Um, so we're putting in quite a bit of carbon dioxide compared to the oxygen that was already there. There we go. Now it doesn't take much, when you do carbon carbonated water, it takes a long time because you're constantly dissolving that carbon di dioxide into the water. But for this, you just get the gas in and you're done. I didn't take that long, it was like one second. Okay, so this thing now has 
the air we, the gas we want, and a lot of it. Um, I don't even think you need to shake it up, I just like shaking beans. Right now it's all mingling and mixing. And now I'm gonna let out the gas. I'm gonna let out that same volume, but it'll be a lot of the um, air that was in there in the first place. All we need to do at the end is get rid of most of the oxygen and get rid of the, uh, and not get rid of, but leave a carbon dioxide environment that's over 10%. And we've just done that. So I feel this is now preserved for a hell of a long time. If I was concerned, since it used like no gas, I can repeat the process. There we go. And uh, now I've cut the oxygen down even in half. Now, open it up without shaking it much. Carbon dioxide's heavy, it stays in there. Seal it up with a cap that doesn't cost $14. And there you go. We're gonna label this, we're gonna put it in the boat, uh, we're going to protect it from sun because it's going to be in a cupboard. It's not going to get any water in there because it's a soda bottle. It's not going to get any bugs because they are having a real bad day right now. And uh, the oxygen level is quite low. So I feel these beans will last a long time. This would be good in a boat, but if you're a prepper type and you want to store things like rice and beans, geez, this is, just seems obvious once I tried it. We'll get back to you in a year or two and we'll tell you how they're holding up. And if you missed my video on how to build this contraption, uh, it's up there. Uh, this is great for making uh, carbonated water, soda pops, and uh, preserving food. Uh, I'm gonna bring in everything else we've already preserved so you can see all the different types of things that work with this method. It's not just beans and rice. Okay, we drug out all these other things and uh, we had the idea, hey, let's see how a powdery thing would work. So I'm a little concerned what happens when we remove the pressure. Well, I put my carbon cap, the old one on here, the thing that's been breaking, and it broke completely. So these are junk. I looked at this saying, well, I wanna finish this video, so I'm gonna use this. I looked at it and I realized this bit screws right off. So this is perfect. Anyway, put it on here. Now this is uh, powdered cocoa, very dusty stuff. If anything's gonna go wrong and explode, it would be this. Hit it now with uh, 60 PSI. Okay. Now with the beans, you just release the pressure. But <laughs> if I release the pressure here, it's gonna be a big mess. So just release it really slowly, I think. Or it's gonna be a very funny video. There we go. All the, well not all, but a whole lot of the atmosphere, oxygen and such is going out. Okay, that was uneventful. Uh, towards the end, the gas down here started expanding and pushing things up and I had to stop it. But just be careful, looks like it works fine. Um, we replaced most of the air with carbon dioxide, still a little oxygen if that bothered you. And I think it does for me because uh, cocoa powder has a lot of fat in it. So I'm gonna do it again. And this time, of course, now, do the math, there's gonna be very, very little atmosphere left. So again, that's it. All right, so carbon dioxide environment, very, very little oxygen. We take off the cap just like with the beans, hold it nice and level and don't shake it around too terribly much. Seal it up. If I had to trust some cocoa powder 10 years old, this would be the cocoa powder I'd trust in 10 years. So let's see what else uh, we're, we're using this method on. We've got rice and we'll end up with a lot of rice in this method, um, but big two liter bottles for that. Uh, some of the beans we have a lot of, again, two liter bottles. What's this? These look like uh, navy beans, and we got black beans, and red beans. Uh, this is uh, corn uh, meal. Uh, we got some mixed beans. These are lentils. Uh, we were at the Asian grocery store and we picked up uh, dried peas, unsplit, full peas. Probably put these in samosas. There's the beans I just put in. Uh, we got some couscous. 
and more couscous. Looks like more cornmeal. Pasta, the little pastas you put in soup fit in these bottles just fine. And I've always had trouble with pasta for long term because you can't vacuum pack it, it's too sharp. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. We got chia seeds, <coughs> the cocoa powder. Uh, this is oatmeal. That goes bad very easily, so I'm looking forward to that. This is interesting. If you don't know what this is, this is TVP, Texturized Vegetable Protein. I'm not a big fan of soy, but uh, this is shelf-stable protein. Uh, it does go bad eventually, especially in the heat. It's this ammonia smell, but uh, that's from oxygen, and this method should solve that. Take some of this, handful of it, throw it in uh, like some pasta sauce, it'll absorb whatever liquid it's in and kind of tastes like that liquid. And if you do it in pasta sauce, it looks like you just added hamburger to the pasta sauce. It gives you that protein. You can feel the difference in the meal. That's about all my thoughts on the subject. I think this should work pretty darn good. We'll keep you uh, abreast of how it worked. Check back at this channel. If in two years we're still eating rice from the U.S., you'll know it worked. Uh, so it's going to help us also when we take, pick up rice in Panama. That rice I had picked up that was bad, I got in Panama. But um, not because Panama is a dirty place, but that rice had to sit on a truck in a hot place, not in a cold place. So it picked up the weevils. This should actually kill the weevils. So this should be a good deal. Uh, anyway, like always, I hope you liked this. I hope you hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We're going to have lots of videos on food and all kinds of ideas that we've got. And, uh, you know, if you'd share this with friends, that would help us have more viewers. And uh, that's what makes us have fun with this. Bye. These don't fit. Okay. Oh, I got things all over here.